everybody. I just woke up. Sorry, a little puffy today. Um, nice to see you. Uh, I just got really inspired to do this video and I know I've been holding back for like years and years and there are some things that I couldn't even really say to myself. So uh, thank you for being a friend of my channel. Um, I suppose I'd like to talk about being queer <laughs> and like not just uh, like who I choose to be with is like um, just really to the to the marrow of my bones being kind of like a queer person and uh, not knowing what to do about it and feeling awkward and not being part of the LGBTQA community and not supporting it necessarily or not necessarily unsupporting it just not being up just not touching it and then also not knowing what to do as a person who uh, claims to be themselves and fails to identify and uh, that's something that I had, um, I suppose, going on since I was a kid. So when I was a kid, everybody thought I was a little boy. And people would just compliment my mother on her gorgeous little son, even though I was a girl, obviously. And uh, my brother, she got the opposite. So uh, everybody thought he was a little girl when he was a little boy. He was really smiley and open and a very attractive child. And uh, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I was very serious and uh, I was just very strong and I actually knew that women's clothes, girls clothes were a burden since I was a child. So um, I'm anti telling or like conforming or confirming with a child what their gender identity is. I think that uh, gender identity isn't something that uh, you can really claim or understand since you're small but um, that story kind of happened to me so I don't know what happened it's just that I knew that I was really happy wearing sports clothes because they were really unassuming and then just like as soon as the dresses came out I just didn't know what to do and um, it's not that even it's just that I just knew I wasn't a girl and it was just weird it was weird <laughs> okay was really weird and uh, I uh, never really grew out of that so when I look at photos of me when I'm young and I'm sorry I don't have anything to show you uh, all the photos at my mama's house I just kind of understood that I wasn't very uh, happy um, doing what everybody else wanted me to do and my mother is a very glamorous ultra glamorous lady and I learned how to be her you know eventually so like how I hold myself and how I talk are kind of like uh kind of how an incredibly gay man would talk I guess I I, th I think that I just got in touch with myself completely seriously privately and I never really uh dependent on anyone because just being that was so hard and I never wanted like my mother to see me as a burden more of a burden that I was and I just like kept on repeating what she would give me so when I was a little girl you know growing up trying to be uh, somebody and trying to fit into the world of what my mom saw for me so being glamorous and being kind of playful and funny like it just like it just never really mattered to me either as a kid I just knew I had to have hope elsewhere so this what I got really girly um girly uh only on the outside but inside i had a private world that nobody could touch so i got also um you know autism and a bit of asperger's there i just didn't want to be a part of anything and that kind of like went hand in hand it's like this is just a weird person such a strange woman such a strange woman growing um in that house and it just like never really faced me because i think i made myself kind of a protective layer with uh, music and art and you know things like that and I was born tone deaf and I couldn't really I couldn't really walk that good you know I was um, I don't know just like one of those odd little kids that wasn't like active was told to stay at home like didn't participate in any sport and any kind of like acting with people couldn't do anything like didn't do any of that and um, eventually kind of that evolved into a need and a trust so like the channel that you see before you now and the other YouTube channel and being good at stuff and like making books and writing. It's not really a motivation. It's just a need because I don't know what else to be. 
so it's like I go out in public like even now being like 37 years old I go out and I look at people and I see them like dressed and I see this kind of like manner and I just fade I just fade and I never could really listen to them you know like the first few layers flu, the first few layers of a personality like before you get to know somebody I just so uh dark and then I just started to rely on psychic ability it was just like I don't have to hear you like pussyfooting around me and doing all of this stuff I can actually just be who I am um which is kind of like the sea or the trees or just like this earth being and then also like being the queer community for a fair few years wasn't that bad actually I gotta say but it didn't really it's not that it didn't get me anything I just I don't know spaced me in such a way that I didn't feel hurt as well so um I gotta tell you how I mean I came out as gay uh, at 23 and yeah that was after already being a dancer for a long time so I was dancing already for like five years so uh, yeah, I should probably also say I started bottling at 14 because the girls at school told me to. And then I started um, like acting and doing all of that stuff uh, for the camera. I had no problem doing that for the camera. And then that eventually transferred into being an exotic dancer. So when you're an exotic dancer, like you got to say... Um, you get a lot of looks and whistles anywhere on the street, you know, and I just, yeah, you know, being objectified isn't something that is very disheartening. I think a lot of girls get uh, not necessarily used to it. It's just like, it's just part of um, the awkwardness of like growing up as a teenager, having to catch the bus, you know, before and after school. And then eventually, inevitably, it turned into just uh, flaming uh, I wouldn't say it's sex work because that suggests that there are sex involved as like imitation sex. I, I don't really know uh, how to say it. I should probably do a separate video on all of that stuff. How does one with uh, autism or whatever walks into, you know, walks into that um, and stays there for 12 years. I don't know. But like anyway, so I... Um, came out eventually at uh, 23 and I was seeing only exclusively women and you know everything changed like I was wearing men's clothes I cut my hair I had uh, so many girls I had so many I had so many girls it was amazing and uh, eventually I fell in love with a woman and we went traveling together we were together for three and a half years and that went okay, and then eventually uh, she came out as a he, and we did the whole journey. So I uh, got this person on YouTube, and I helped this person get some attention from the media, and they've done a little um, kind of like a documentary on my ex-partner and everything. And... Uh, yeah, so I went through being next to somebody uh, on hormones and everything. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it. So that was probably the epitome of queerness, you know, having, uh, you know, surgery, top surgery there. Um, this person had top surgery after our relationship ended. Um, you know, hormones and identities. Uh, I've uh, created a business for this person, so this person was selling online, like, uh, you know, uh, like things to pee out of, to pretend, like, you know, to imitate how, how a man pees, and, you know, a special underwear to hold prosthetic um, things inside to make it look like you have something in your underwear, you know, so that really put me off everything eventually and also I went towards a completely different way so I was like going towards ayahuasca and trying to get to know myself and kind of yoga and eating good and like growing my own vegetables so it's not that I went on the new age buzz but I kind of did even though I hated it I hated people that did it but I I did it and then basically we grew out of each other and um, eventually I had uh, gay men as relationships and uh, that went fine because the role play or like the sensitivity to one another was just obvious it's just like I'm just like an androgynous little kind of uh, 
creature or like a forest spirit and that's all good and then that went really far so that was very easy and then nobody questioned me in public and I could like travel and I didn't have to cut my hair because yeah it's not just this like um I guess I'm not so benign now you know I didn't actually feel that good being in the queer uh, scene either because there was role play and then there was teaching each other how to live how to be mummy or daddy and I just like continued and also I noticed that the queer community didn't really want to see anything, didn't want to hear anything. It just like became this very blocky um, wonder wheel of uh, psychosis. And uh, not just that, it was also very happy, has a lot of humor in it. It just like didn't understand me and it didn't define me. Um, but it definitely did make lots of places I could be. I could be an androgynous man in the Victorian sort of like clothes. I could be um, sort of a short with short hair and I could like, I don't know, have lots of lots of girls looking at me, lots of boys as well. It was just so easy. It was so like definite, you know, going to these clubs and venues where people would congregate and it was just like, that's so gay. And I was like, I know, I know, honey, I know. You know, and that felt really kind of clearing, so I didn't actually have to have an introduction, you know, where if I went into heterosexual spaces, beautiful idea to talk about this. So I'd go to heterosexual spaces, and um, there were always all of these uh, women first, like, hey, I'm going to be my friend, you know, like, and they had the eyebrows and the, and the eyes, and, you know, and I'd just be like, ah, uh, what do you want me to do? Like, do you want, do you want some help? Like, what do you want me to do? I never really could. I, ne I never still can meet them on like, hey, girl, hey, let's run into the forest and pick some flowers and make a flower crown. And I don't know, like, let's talk about boys. I couldn't ever, I, I never, like, I could never really fully sacrifice that world as well. So, like, um, the way that I fit into it, now, as I understand, is I just like fit in as this kind of quiet person and maybe even a slightly holy person because of my YouTube channel, the other channel, and like how much energy and constant clientele I get from reading the stars, reading astrology, which is very easy for me. It's very kind of drab, you know, it's kind of nun ish. It's kind of like being a nun, but it isn't, you know, so like. I gotta say, like, I always really loved um, men who were kind of queer, and I've always helped them feel good about themselves without having to identify necessarily, or not having to play, you know, with me or with others, so just, like, held safe spaces also for women that didn't really want to be um, women, or didn't want to be in, in the rat race of being, like, an achiever as a woman, you know, or being, like, a competitive girl. And uh, competition, you know, it's interesting, people ask, you know, at a, at a club, would there be lots of competition between women? And there is not, you just have this nice mutual understanding. And um, in a way, I know how a guy thinks, because I think like them. <laughs> so it's, like, it's weird, I, I wonder like how gender works, like I really wonder what, it, what that is, you know, and I never could really um, fully see myself as that, until like I realized there was not necessarily like, a trap and gender but it's just like nothing else it's like no matter how many nice little summer dresses I buy and how I arch my back and how I do this um even though my body's been trained to be specifically for the male gaze you know for 12 and a half years I've been dancing as an exotic dancer and such it's just like I just honestly like I really actually like couldn't fully ever do it I I can't do it I I seem to uh, meet men though like that really like me like this you know like really like me and um, I think it's because I'm like that guy on the other side um, of all of this like I, I don't know I just feel like I'm like the, that, the, the guy and I'm like hey bro it's okay don't worry let's, like let's let's chill you do, do a beer or something like I'm just like really uh, I think passive and that um, sensitivity that I feel requ is requir required, you know, being um, female and male at the same time, it's always kept like in this kind of puzzle, like a Pandora's box, like I feel like I'm really like a puzzle, and I never could really say that to anybody, and then eventually, you know, like, men and women and all of this, you know, it becomes unnecessary, like, who likes you? Because sometimes it could be both, you know, it's like both androgynous people 
even though like I'm not like the magazine version of what androgynous is you know androgynous people like to the core and their soul androgynous people are very kind of endowed with a certain type of sparkle and I do understand that it's like almost like an interchangeable uh, species and I understand that in fashion and the arts and stuff have been really sought for and then like you know these queer communities and scenes and there's certain people that don't feel very good around anybody and then androgynous person is almost like a mother father god or something like that or is like the um sensitive and then you know the also like slightly uh cruel uh person sometimes you know like the world is so hard for anybody who is left off center which is a little strange and weird and um I get it, like, I think that also, like, we the androgynous people, like, we the, my type of person, I think that this actually exists as, like, even maybe a movement, I just don't know about it, um, we exist, uh, people that haven't really got any, um, place to be, like, you know, and, uh, on the gender spectrum or anything, it's just, um, we really like it here, it's just really hard to be around other people. You know, I think that it's like really difficult, you know, the minute that you see the sparkle in the eyes because you hit a certain chemical point and sometimes you hit both or three or four different chemicals. So like when they see you, they don't know how to identify with you. They're like, oh, you're kind of like my mother, but you're kind of also like the girl from the magazine, but you also kind of like this boys to like smoke weed outside of school with. And then like you kind of remind me of this person like Tilda Swinston or um whoever else like you remind me of this you remind me of that you re remind me of uh, i used to be uh paris hilton people you should tell me i look like paris hilton. it's really funny it's just like you look like this person then you look like that person and it's just like the face keeps on changing and just like morphs into whatever like they like because there's no identity it's just like no way of identifying a person it's like you look really young but you also look incredibly old and strange you know it's like Sure, like, you know, secure yourself a place and live it, but, like, there is no real place uh, like you. So that's a really hard yard, I think, for, like, really, really queer persons because it's not really of matter eventually, like, who you are in the community and how people treat you and if people want to uh, employ you, have sex with you, if you have enough friends to last you the life. I actually really don't think any of that mattered and also... Yeah, I think most of my better friends probably have come from the queer community or they were queer people and I only found out, you know, as our relationship went on or something. It was just like, I really enjoy this um, boundary changing world, but like there is no real economical space. So, you know, like when people try to sterilize it and put it into words like, I am this, I identify as this my gender, is this my identity, is this I'm like pansexual, you know, like all of these like words, and it's just a fluff, it's just like farts in the air, it's just like, it doesn't actually mean anything, it doesn't mean that much, um, but there is a way, I mean, I suppose like to uh, make you yourself, which is like the weirdest, like most wondrous thing, and I think I'm sort of trying to come to that uh, feeling of being okay about people knowing that I do what I do because I've also been incredibly censored by my YouTube channel, my other channel, my astrology channel. I just like, I didn't really feel like I could put any work out there. I didn't feel I could come out about anything in my life and I couldn't really be myself because I had to be this talking head like, hi Capricorn, how's it going? Like, it just never really um, defined me and I think there's always going to be a truth. And then like when I think about what defines me, you know what I really love? I love um, Victorian <laughs> intellectualism. Like I love uh, these ways in which the Victorian uh, called goth. I love goth. Like I love um, like really profound, you know, um, sentimentality and kind of like a seriousness, but also like a uh, sugary sort of... Uh, laughter at the world of um, all of it you know so when I look at vintage photographs of like Oscar Wilde and Virginia Woolf and other queer people that have really I suppose supported me as energies um, you know also Georgia O'Keeffe and there Frida Kahlo not so much but um, because of her I've learned a lot as well it's just like um, 
there are some sacred kind of ancient angels, you know, that I um, understand that I take on board. Um, well, there are others, you know, as well that didn't actually have to even think about which way they were swinging like everybody these days does. And it isn't actually about swinging and you know, like who you appeal to and how to market or use your energy, which is disgusting. It's more just about life. And um, in a way, it's just organs, like how your body works, how it feels, how it maybe you look sometimes also it's not actually that um there is like a way that people are just kind of built for certain emotional energetic purpose and um i don't see that in uh, me these days because it's been so washed out and tempered with by uh the sex industry so like being a model and, and a dancer has washed me out and i never really got to like i suppose claim myself um but there is like a way, I suppose, if I look at the things that I write, like I wrote a book, uh, it's in the caption section below, uh, a, a book about love, and it's called Love Letters to Myself, and it's mostly just a queer, like, 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 like a queer book, and it's a book of poems, and it just talks about um, what one is feeling is guiding kind of the the reader through a lot of these androgynous question marks, and... Um, I don't even think that is very interesting, you know, I don't even think that book is uh, somebody that I truly am or have ever been, it's just uh, a kind of a very annoying question mark, um, like it's just a very confusing way of life, being kind of like, uh, like born like this, and it's not actually necessarily about uh, choosing the words right or the pronouns or like anything, and doesn't mean anything and clothes are just clothes you know and all of that and um the body is just body and genitalia eventually like it just it gets so bored of it it doesn't mean anything and like how people dress these days and like how they apply makeup or you know the little fashion items they wear and they're like leather jackets or whatever it's just like and that's weird so it's like being outside of culture so being curator of other people's lives you know because of being so incredibly outside and then yeah there is this like holy thing of the twin spirit not twin flames haha <laughs> twin spirit you know two spirit people um you know uh and like say uh native american culture and also other cultures Asiatic culture, like in Thailand, it's a thing, it's in, in Indonesia, and also like I'm sure parts of Africa are like that, other places. There's probably lots of space for it, it's just like uh, the two-spirit person who is kind of both in one, you know, and doesn't have to identify with uh, either one, and they're kind of like sort of said to be shamans or like healers because they don't really need anybody, there's like one and two and one you know and um i also really like that and uh i closed that book a little while ago like i knew that say indigenous shamanism usually is a show and a scam as i found out like living in peru and mexico and other places like that um there's nobody that really understands what they're doing in that world from what i see they're very rare people that have fully sacrificed themselves to the I suppose shamanic realms and the realms of like in emerging and blending and I've seen maybe one in my life and then that's that it's like that person is neither nor male or female you know and then they just basically are inside their body to bring whatever they're bringing to earth and then there's something that I've been kind of trying to do with my work and my realm of uh, understanding you know, filling in the gaps in the world history and trying to help people and aid them, like, go from point A to B. And that was really interesting for me. That was really interesting. But, like, the minute you tell people, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm, like, a two-spirit shaman. It's like, what? Like, you know, it's just, like, another gimmick. It's like, I'm a yoga teacher. You know, I'm a tantric master. Like, you know, like, all of that world. You know, it's like, I'm a transgender activists I don't know like I'm this I'm that like people make all of these labels 
and I think everybody's just grown so tired of them, you know. And I think everybody minds their business these days. Like people don't judge one another as they did, like back when I was a young woman. Uh, so I'm really grateful for it. So it's probably like the only time I could expose any of my materials are like closer to the time where anybody who gets their pronouns wrong like gets kind of a spanking, I suppose, from mummy or daddy or whatever it is. You know, it's like we have that extra door of the toilets and, you know, people really want to understand it, I think. And there are some people with actual empathy, but most people are just so afraid of putting their food in their mouth you know people just afraid of getting it wrong because it's like the next thing is like accepting people for whatever choice they choose even though yeah like they could be blatantly lying to themselves and the after effects of like hormone damage I actually wrote a song about this I will probably one day put it online but like there's also like a child in the sacred inside of you and it uh, never wants to be judged or touched this way and uh that's hard, and I do understand that, like, queer logic and the queer way of life, I think it just, like, opens people up to so much abuse and humiliation and unnecessary experiences, and I've had some happen to me, but not as many as my friends, and being also stereotyped and fetishized for being a queer and being put into a box and being put and dirty places, you know, and I, I know that, I know that, um, like, just doing this video and just, like, talking about being a queer person is going to definitely put me in the, oh, that's a little loopy box, even though everybody's gonna be, oh, I'm so happy that you could talk about this, you know, very out about it, and then I also get it, like, you know, um, transgender community, other communities, um, that I've represented ages ago, um, I've been nothing but nice to me, but you see, like, the world that was nice and safe started to close and close and close. And eventually I just became a woman to a uh, wannabe man, you know, so that's it. And, uh, you know, and people would be like, you know, why don't you just, like, cut your hair all crazy and, you know, wear the men's clothes and be in this. Just that's enough, you know, I'm, I'm over it. I'm, I've done it. I'm, I'm done with it, you know. And uh, maybe the only way to be is naked. And I do understand that a lot of, most of the queer community is never nudes. And uh, that's not too bad. It's just like be naked outside. You know, that's my favorite. Like this house, perfect for that. You know, it's like be naked outside and be naked with yourself and your thoughts and your feelings. And um, soon enough, any community dries up. So that's actually another thing that I'd like to touch on. When you're like really empty and uh, naked with who you are, uh, any of it doesn't mean anything. And all of these communities that I've been a part of in the past, they're just this small and uh, they never evolved. That's the thing, it's like you walk into a community and you try to be nice and you play with it and then that's where you're a traveler, you know, you don't have to necessarily just like stick around and, you know, see what like Martha and Judy are doing next week and you know it never really had to be and I think that there is a huge huge task of conformity that comes with any queer religion but these days it's like a religion um, because like by doing what they're doing and conforming and finding these safe uh, places and safety nets I think that they really um, forget themselves and um, they put themselves under it's not like spells, it's like pressure to be somebody else's all the time. So like there's these new affirmative, like affirmative, aff affirmative, I don't, neither, neither. There is these new kind of mums and dads in the queer scene and they're kind of like the champions, you know, they're in the 40s or 50s or like they're just really, really cool and stylish and they've made it or it looks like they've made it and then they become the judgment committee and it's just like being at high school and people never actually do anything with their lives they just like sit there waiting I mean like my gosh like there was so much complacency and just like selfishness and boredom in my life when I was uh, dating women and it wasn't necessarily in me it was just like I found a sweet spot a way how to survive and I think this is the future of humanity as well uh, to a degree is just like knowing how to like put a sequence together and identify and like hit that umami spot 
as to how you dress and feel and then eventually uh, everything falls into place but you see my friends that's where that rubbish is and that's where toxicity is and being unawoken and being unaware is inside that it's like yeah you know like I love my feminist zines you know like I love my tattoos I love you know girls with short hair or girls with long hair I love you know the 60s burlesque you know I love I don't know like ponchos and hats I love like cute little cats on my socks I love like puppies I love animal shelter I love the animals you know I'm a vegan you know this is like the queer world you know it's like a maze it's just a maze it's like I love a little bit of eyeliner but I also like cut my hair all crazy you know I like a little bit of nail polish but my nails are super short you know like it's like children it's like five-year-olds uh, dreaming this little dream and they don't even know how free they uh, could be so um, I suppose I, I shouldn't really talk so much about that but yeah I just found that in the queer community it sort of went back to conformity it's like passing as a guy it eventually happened um, in my relationship uh, passing as this passing as that um, wanting to be this wanting to be that wanting to um, do this or do that, you know, be in a household like this or like that, you know, and then showing people that the household works, you know, so we make little cookies, just like straight people, right, even better, you know, we watch, uh, I don't know, like, My Little Pony, I don't know, like, it's usually cutesy stuff, we watch anime, you know, it's usually something like that, and then it just becomes yet another box, it's like, I'll get a piercing in my septum, or like, I'll get swallows on my chest, you know, I'll... I'll shave half of my head and then the other half is long. It's just like all of that crap, you know, I seen it back in the 90s, Jesus. Like, um, I really, in a way, uh, probably also never grew out of it because I do understand also like the principles of like filling out a scene. Like, in some ways, uh, I do definitely understand that some people identify with me because I'm like, GM-free, organic, uh, certified, vegan, uh, seemingly, it's not true at the moment, but sure, uh, like kind of mom of the world, you know, angelic healer, you know, ayahuasca shaman, what, are, like, what other jargon can we put in there, like, I don't know, like, masochist, masochist, as is most of the new age movement, you know, trying to help everybody, trying to support every single person they know, trying to be good to other humans, trying to be cute and nice and friendly, listening to awakened music and shamanic drumming and flutes, indigenous flutes, you know, collecting sacred items, wearing the flower of life costume, you know. And I definitely get it. And, uh, ah, it's funny. Um... I never could uh, understand it. Um, I have almost no friends from that scene. I go there and then they're like, Divine Mother, Celestial Feminine. I was like, okay, sorry, bro. Sorry, mate. Sorry, I can't relate to that. And then they were like, come on, just come out and die. like be yourself, Paulina. Be yourself. We want to break you free. It's like, we want to make you mother. Or like, we want to make you pregnant. Or like, we want to make you, what else do they want from me? We want you to wear the most uh, luscious but casual, you know, organic cotton wear. And we want you to, I don't know, make a little soup for us. And it's just, here we go. It's just another trap. It's just another self-identity and uh, the dis-ease of people not wanting to be who they are. And uh, that's that. And uh, I think that's why a lot of us people, you know, keep... Our lives private I think not many people want to go outside and say anything about who they are how they feel or what their life experience has been and I think people are just keeping quiet counting the steps I think most of us are kind of just like hey don't mind me I'm just like you <laughs> yeah I'm just like you you know and I think that's really really hard and then like you know tiger year goes by you don't get to like do that big thing you can't do anything because rabbit year contracts you you know 2023 is going to be very kind of like hush now you can't say this in public wait you have to make your hair nice you have to put the lotion on the skin and I do get it 
and uh, maybe there is also like a homophobe in me like scared of just like um, who else I could be and how else one could be and uh, what else one could represent you know and it's just so weird you know it's like uh, when you are like getting it's not getting older but getting more yourself with time and you get more secure and kind of significant in you and then like watching the world go through its things is just so crazy it's just so kind of gay all of it it's like a virus it's like a bug everybody's like under the rainbow flag you know everybody's kind of rainbow these days and everybody wants to be all supporting and all loving and yeah like a true masochist like accepting of everybody and nodding to everything anybody ever says and then at the same time, like, securing themselves in some, like, very, like, doubtful grounds and just, like, biting their nails and just, like, you know, waiting. Waiting for things to get better or secure and uh, all of that, like, hairstyles and nails and outfits and makeup and... God, that's so goody to shoes, like, my gosh, you know, everybody's just so crazy. I came out as a goth. I, I gotta say, uh, conversation's getting boring. I'm almost done, sir. Um, I came out as a goth when I was like, I think I was like, seriously, like 12 years old. But uh, it only hit me really when I was like 16, 17, because I just knew that my mother would never care. So I decided to rebel. I wasn't rebelling. I was just like dressing. I did really well. I loved it. I still have... Uh, People that know me from back then, they're like, when are you coming back? <laughs> you know, and um, that's another box. You know, it's like you get to really express your personality. Uh, when I was in, when I went really far into that scene, you get to just be yourself. Like that sort of entertainment culture, the kind of like sideshow culture. I love it so much. I love it. I also wrote a song about it. Um, but I, I, I will have to say, like, it was so shocking to me how little people really knew about themselves and each other. And it comes back to TV dinners, watching, like, some spooky show, anime, usually anime, Japanese animation. You know, usually it's, like, about um, some kind of, like, cruelty-free loving of animals, like, these days. Eventually it got there, you know, like, I'm a vegan goth, you know, and it's just, like, very close to queer culture. It's just, like, another way of identifying. And then, like, um... I heard that there's also a thing with furries, it's like, I now identify as a cat, or like, I identify as a dog, it's like, my gosh. Yeah, so, um, I suppose, like, I might be seen a little different than that, because I have compilations, I have compilations of art, and music, and writing, and living experience, and travel, and many, many different gifts that I can um, show. And maybe that's what makes a difference, you know, it's like this person has a compilation. Or maybe it actually doesn't mean anything, it's just this person likes to do these things. So. But, um, you know, living as an artist, and not just like, I'm an artist, I've made two fine art prints. It's like, you know, when you like living as, as an artist, like, here we go, another identity. Like, you know, Georgia O'Keeffe, you know, yada, 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 you know, there's so many amazing, you know, artists out there. You know, and they just don't know what to, what to do with themselves. You know, they just don't know where to go. Like everything is just so tragic and like passive aggressive and shitty and repetitive and like prosaic and boring. And yeah, like an artist, like if we look at where art has gone, really, it's just so laughable. You know, you go to these big giant museums, um, adequate music, like adequate people putting absolute. Uh, mierda on the walls like you go to like a museum and there is just like wow when I was in New York I saw these white canvases just white canvases and they're like this is this is it this is art you guys dudes this is art and I was like fuck I was like this is really weird that's really crazy uh, that was really weird that like people would ever do that and um, you know growing up in New Zealand very liberal country I've seen so much crap in the art museums, like, I've seen absolute bollocks, and people pay money for it, you know, and that's something, I don't know, like, what has stopped me from doing that, it's like, I know, I will, like, piss 
I will piss on the canvas and I will uh, manage that and then somebody else will sign a little paper and somebody else will sign another little paper and then that is $50,000 right there. <laughs> you know, like, I could piss it. You know, like, the 60s, 70s art movements, I mean, what they've done with the world, also since Cubism, you know, actually Picasso could draw pretty good. He just didn't care to. <laughs> he just didn't. He was like, I'm going to make the most disgusting thing and I'm going to get paid, damn it. <laughs> You know, so then I will wonder about this, like the world of ugliness and like non-conformity. And then like, you see, that's already a joke. You know, like I will make something so fucked up and so kind of fancy at the same time that everybody will like want to drink wine and eat crackers around it, you know, like all of that stuff. It's just such a joke to me, you know. And then like, you understand, like what really have you got at the end of the day? And if you don't serve a society, like say, if you don't serve us money, if you don't serve us religion, if you're not signed up to Jesus Christ, you're not signed up to like this and matrimony and getting married and production of children, if you don't really feel anything anymore and you know the, psycho the circus that is behind human lives and how many of us like struggle because of it and how long, my God. How long it took me to just like not buy my mom's crap anymore, not buy other people's problems anymore, not want to be like somebody else, not wanting to be a maid or a service person, somebody else. Oh, you know, you're a woman, come on, help out, you know, like all this. My God, like it took me so long and I was boring. It's boring again, right? I mean, 41 minutes. Sorry about that, you guys. But for some of you, it's, it's really good, right? Who else talks about it? I don't know. Nobody else talks about it. But, you know, like, so, like, let's talk about that. You know, it's like the androgynous um, conformity. It's just like, I still have to, like, say, catch a taxi. I still have to use the bank card. Also, society, societalism, you know, capitalism, communism, societalism. Okay, yeah. Even like in the most liberal place like this, there's just still kind of like, there's still there. Anywhere. You go outside, like there is like these, oh my god, you guys, like, I've lost my myself so much, you know, like I live in this like completely free world, right? And I could go and do anything, I could buy anything, I could sell anything, I could make anything, I could look at my plants, you guys. I'm sorry, this is the climax of the show. Look at these plants. Aren't they really beautiful? Look at this. Like, how could anybody be mad? You know, it's like you live in this beautiful world. You look like a princess now. Even if you're a boy. Even if you're a boy. You know, it's like, you look, you look, you pass. <laughs> I'm passing as a girl. Uh, passing as a normal human. Never mind. Okay, so like going outside, I'm losing it. Um, going outside into the communities, you know. You know, um, I'm talking about like the native like Peruvians, like these uh, people come from the jungle, right? The jungle, the jungle, you know, like real jungle. Um, and then I'm kind of like meeting them, you know, face to face sometimes and I'm, you know, hello. And then they just like see me for this, just this, like, oh, this looks like a well-presented woman. They, they don't even, they can't read it. You don't know like them like hey guys what's up they kind of they don't even care they're like this you know or like when I open my bag of money and they see how much I have inside and that speaks more you know like they, they they kind of mentally count how much I got in there because of like the little bulge of paper money or whatever and um, that's it I mean that's also another way to go to go to do it. it's like you live in the free world and then you're like kind of also a stereotype you know like they don't even bother with me it's like are you a man or a woman they're like like what are you like you're kind of weird you're like kind of what are you like what's this face what's this personality behind it like they don't even care about this they're like this this looks like you have and they estimate what I have you know and I show up places with my boyfriend so uh that's no problem, right? You know, that's it. You know, say like walking around by myself uh, would have one impression. You know, walking around with a woman, another, work it, working it out with this guy, other, and walking around with another type of guy is another. It's just like that. It's just uh, painting by numbers, you know. So like that's the big idea is to inevitably, eventually, uh, not have to live like that. Not have to just be constantly identified by external items. It's like part of the industry, you know what I mean? 
as just like external you've probably worked it out by now but like you know it's like there is like a way that um people have been also very hopeful for me to me uh not really knowing that which I've come from so when I'm like say walking down the street in Peru nobody expects that I've had some very extreme experiences in my life they're like that's a nice little daddy's girl with a nice little wallet that's it and in a way like one thing cancels out the other it's like you dress up as a goth they're like wow I love your makeup you're so cool I love how you're smoking those clove cigarettes I love the boots man like let's talk about something like 1980s like the 80s you know like they love it and then everything else gets cancelled out the fact that you still suck your thumb at night the fact that you don't really believe in anything you know the fact that you don't really like anybody the fact that you like smell or you don't shower it doesn't matter you know the community accepts you but then this other community might absolutely not it's like no 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 we do we do this now like, where is your color? Like, where is this? Where is your style? So it's just such a nerve-wracking thing to me, like, presenting anything outside. And I think this is where I just have to, like, uh, come to a truth. It's like, uh, there is a certain type of, I think, schizophrenia in most people in the world. I think it's just, like, being so, like, after one thing and then wanting another and another and another and just not knowing how to stop. So also, like, producing all this music and all this tantra videos. Yeah, I get all this shit... It's like, it's a very nice thing, like, for me to have in mind also, like, sometimes it's just very um, uncomfortable what one is, so one finds all these little blankets and, like, thumb sucking, like, an artist, like, a really avid artist that produces a lot of things, so they're just, like, trying to get away, they just want to work out how to get out of it all and then eventually yeah I have to like come back to a truth it's just like I don't even I don't even mind any of it I don't even care you know whether or not somebody does or doesn't like my music whether it is mantras today or it is like screaming down the microphone like about I don't know Satan you know it's it's I've done both you know what I mean I've done all of it you know I've done almost everything you know in terms of love and sexuality and travel and possibility and potential and the potential to birth children, you know, had many, many choices to make there. But, you know, like, uh, people still hold hands with you at the end of the day. If you can uh, rub your face free of makeup, you know, for one, you know, and just be okay, you know, just just be fine, you know, whatever. Like, this is just a rag that I'm covering myself up with today, you know. It's just like, if you become very beautiful to you, and I think that's really, that's it, like, becoming very beautiful to oneself, no matter how one is possessed on the outside, you know, how one is externally or externalized. And that that takes, like, so much time to understand. Like, I think for me, my soul, my God, like, I still don't know how to, like, ask for things. You know, it's like, I ask my boyfriend, like, can you make me a cup of tea? And I'm just like, he's not your slave. You know, like, it's like, you know, it's like I still get mad at it, like, and I don't really know how to, like, I suppose, yet succeed in my own way, in my own view of myself. I still don't know how to succeed, because, like, I just don't understand. And uh, uh, segregation has gone on for far too long, and I haven't had any friends for a really big reason. I think I just didn't want anything clinging, clinging to me and telling me what to do and telling me how to live my life, and... That's been very helpful in my case. No, I got to share that. I got to share that, right? I mean, this is like 48 minutes now. Not having any friends, uh, only having like paid clients or only having people that come to me for a reason, providing services in exchange. For like, um, seriously, a long time. It's just I didn't want anybody like, scratching at me like inside you know I didn't want anybody like uh sticking around for too long you know and also like living alongside me and uh telling me how good it feels to be friends and hug and then eventually I also know that it's going to lead me to just like the next level of uh, me maybe sometimes but also like incredible sadness and heartache and deficit and you know neurosis that most people carry around with them so I just never I uh, never kept any of my friends and uh, I think that's actually you see like this is a very interesting topic friendships I've had so many friends 
and uh, most of them just wanted to be in bed with me eventually. So I never kept any. I was like, eh. And uh, eventually I knew that it was just about marriage getting hitched, you know, getting hitched up and like uh, servicing or serving, serving the world within a certain type of uh, world. Like the burlesque community, I've also been a part of that. You know, it's like um, people identifying and they being friends between people's houses and then starting little families and affirmative relationships and then like wanting to be somebody else also eventually, inevitably after all, but you know, still... Uh, sharing a meal, you know, a slice of bread, you know, taking the picture together, putting it online. It's like, we're still friends, you know, and I, I never, I never did that. <clears throat> and I see that, you know, there's like quite a boring world out there and all those algorithms I had as a child, you know, growing up, um, having experiences with lots of people that shouldn't even been in my life. And I still feel resentful about that, like having sensual or emotional experiences with people that just like, seriously... I could just like throw really real quick and you know and then it ends up like hitting a basket you know like I I never really wanted that I think I never really wanted to be on show because at the core of society there's a need to just breed and make something it's like bacteria it's just bacteria you know and pieces of it kind of still fit for me oh well you know in the outer world but I just don't think it really does, and then like everybody just wants to get hitched, everybody wants to have something meaningful or powerful, whether they are straight, gay, bi, curious, I don't know, like black, white, yellow, I don't know, everything is just going the same way, everybody got the same questions, eight years of psychic work, I know exactly what people are going to say, you know, it's like, uh, there is like a meaninglessness to it, it's like a trivia, trivia-ness, trivia energy, but then there is also, okay, also the other stuff, like there is God, you know, there was this guy I met once and he was really into like whatever this or that, you know, like all of this like really spicy stuff. And that's where you kind of see that it, yeah, meaningful things. I've met like a person like once who really, 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 really loved me for a minute. And I know that, like I know like when a person really sees you for who you are and they don't ask you to be anything else, that's really rare. Like they don't ask you to dress any way that you don't want to dress. They don't ask you to produce any kind of impulse on your face or your body that you can't biologically produce uh, they don't want to be any bigger or any smaller they don't want you to be any healthier or any thinner they just like they just an like ultimate fantasy with you just because you are you I've had that in my life one time right um there are sometimes that it happens like a person really really loves uh who you are just because you you exist just because you are who you are. And then this person is just, you know, whatever, like going about their day, like sometimes checking out my work, sometimes not going to parties, whatever. And like I knew that um, at the time, sorry. <clears throat> and that was it. And that was like the neurological like combustion. It's like some of the time that happens, this happened in my life one time, like somebody who really, really just looks at you, just gets you. And they're not look, looking at you like, you should put some lipstick on that face. Or like, you should straighten your hair. Or like, you should do this. Like, they just, like, yeah, I like you. Um, this happened to me in my life one time. And um, eventually, I don't know whether it was meaningless or not. I'm not sure. But that is not my person. <laughs> it's a proud person for some something else somewhere else, you know. And never really mattered in the end, you know. But it uh, makes sense sometimes to pay attention if actually... Somebody really uh, likes you and respects you for who you are, doesn't want you to change. Uh, this is a very rare gift and you can't demand it from other people. I'm a he, not a she, or like, I'm a they. It's like, no, it's like, I'm a xi, like xi, you know. I'm an it, uh, I don't know. It, uh, I don't know. Like all of that stuff. Um, as juvenile, really, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't make um, anything easier. Or oh, harder, it just doesn't mean anything. Either. And then eventually, like, inevitably, uh, you're going to get old and die. Ah! Well, you know, good if you do, uh, you know. So don't just get sick young and die. You, like, get old and die. Like, don't be scared. Don't think it's drab. It's like, you get old and die. And uh, that's also something to consider. Lifelong dreams. Um, 
And some of it, yeah, maybe it's very trivial. It's like very stupid. It's like I can imagine, like say, writing music well into my 60s. I can imagine painting pictures well into my, I don't know, 70s or something. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense, you know. And then it's just like lost and confused between all these different worlds and versions of what makes an artist, what makes true art, what makes anything or anybody. You know, and then eventually you just got to say no and just be like, okay, look, I've just got to express myself. And then the only real um, reason to live at the end of the day, um, because I know like it's got to like fully go over anything I've said in this video, is just um, feeling blessed, feeling good about life, uh, feeling fortunate, you know, no matter what, and just enjoying your time. And then all of that mumble jumble, you know. As hard as it is to fit in society, as, hard, as impossible. Look at this, it's impossible. Like, I'm a little grandpa in the dress. We're really crazy, you know? Like, it's impossible. But, like, I think it heals me to know that there are so many other people feeling this way. And then, then there is now communities to accommodate anything. I mean, there is so much of it. I mean, there are so many different spells and... Uh, brilliant ideas as to how a home should be run or like how a relationship should be put together it's like it used to be a religion and now it's just like trivial societal collector's market it's like flea market everything is just like for sale these days and then i just like i kind of just don't want to be confused anymore and um like i really want to just be who i am without having to even imagine that there was once a box for me uh, so like you know when you're walking around you're just breathing and you don't even have to identify or notice anything or anybody's like breathing you know like movement practice you know unboxing oneself from these premises you know uh, walking around feeling your body like how good it is to have a functional body or a non-functional body, or just means you have a choice whether or not you, you know, fix it or not. I'm not bullying you into it, but that would be preferable, you know, quality of life and everything. Um, you can only emit what you really feel, you know. So, like, that's it. It's like, <sighs> imagine everybody's naked. Like, I often find it so interesting just to imagine it. It's like, everyone's naked. Everybody's naked, nobody has any makeup on their face, nobody's brushed their hair today, you know. And everybody's just like, kind of like, obvious, you know. Everybody's obvious. Nobody's wearing any perfumery, and nobody has put any kind of like, I don't know, deodorant on, nobody has shaved their armpits today. Like, everybody's just like, unpasteurized humans, you know, everything is just like, kind of what it is ah <sighs> I mean imagine it if everything was just what it was and you don't have to make up stories you don't have to teach the children anything you know storytelling like making little pictures of posters or like libraries or biblias you know you don't need to do anything you know you don't have to like make any like phone calls you don't have to like make a face you don't have to show your teeth to anybody you don't have to like be careful watch your back watch your territory you don't have to like make friends with the right people you don't have to market anything you don't have to word anything you don't have to like sit there building websites you know you don't have to like get along to the right thing and get in on the gang and repeat everything they're doing you don't need to you don't have to do that so uh how to unfuck yourself, you know, as they say, like, well, I think that takes ages, I think it's just about uh, belief in oneself, and then just like, who am I, it's like, you are just this, you know, this is it, you know, it's like, who am I, it's like, uh, what is this, you know, and then all of that other stuff, like, the haberdashery just goes out the window, although it was fun to play with once, you know, children's toys you know costumes and makeup and voices that people put on just to feel attractive and bulletproof with other people which is most of us most of us you guys are actors most of you guys most of it could be in hollywood like anybody could get hired as an actor almost every single person is an actor 
and then eventually like trying to walk away from realities that you don't want to create as a uh, false representative of who you are oh yes I'm a father of two and I got a great house you know like oh yeah I'm a mummy or like oh yeah I love I love my life I love getting my nails done I love going to the salon like, eh, eh. it's just <laughs> never made anything perfect and um, I wish I knew how like I, I really wish I mean at the moment my truth is uh, I suppose quite not necessarily limited it's just yeah it's like mm, my tr my truth still is walking around these circles that I've made as a child like drawing pictures you know telling people about life having spiritual Tourette's you know like helping people in their world I still w walking around a maze of its own and I would like to maybe like the maze first and then grow into somebody who actually could see the forest from the trees and walk out from that so uh that's my little question mark there at the end of this hour long identity based spell and uh yeah and yeah it's kind of very unlike me to end something on a question mark and maybe in there is the truth, the question mark of life. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Anyway, um, I feel like I can't go yet. I still have to say something. I don't know. And the question mark of life. Um, and the mega point that I'm trying to make is, um, and the moral of the story is, can't lead people on for an hour and just not say nothing at the end, right? Like whoever, like three people who actually ended till the end, you know, lasted till the end. Um, maybe five, I don't know. Yeah, like, what happens in the end? Um, if you ever had, I had, close to death experience, you'll see yourself. Clinical death, I had a clinical death, uh, almost, very close. Um, how can I say this? It's like, well, it's like other hyper spiritual stuff. It's like when you get to that point where you know there is like probably not going to be that long that you live, or you might not last for another heartbeat. Um, you don't need to experience that, just letting you know. And you know that everything is like closing time. You know, it's like that's a curtain call. Uh, you know yourself very well in that moment because suddenly all of those rose tinted glasses and ways of like paradoxing yourself and ways of uh, understanding your life become completely meaningless and uh, that's kind of how I live actually a lot of the time and then I try to cover it up with whatever I can do in the day because it's just too hard it's just too uh, helpless I think like to be myself really at the end of the day and like to perceive understand be constant communication with God it's kind of weird it's really like grotesque and I think for some reason I've like really didn't want that to ever surface so that's another little face I've always talked to God like and um, then here I am in a nun's uniform right or here I am and like naked, like the trees are singing to me, you know, like state, you know. So like that's uh, that, you know, like talking to God, um, communicate, like shamanic realities, communicating with different type of energies and like knowing how to like reprogram my body and like talking to people's energies and like passing on messages and implanting energies and. Oh, so cool that stuff. It's just like that's uh, that's it. I mean, that's the pro probably the the biggest closet that I have to come out of is just like my stereotype probably is right, you know. So the pulling out can I channel with the like channeling and stuff. Yeah, I mean that's correct. <clears throat> and uh, then nobody really gets to fuck with you. Nobody touches you. You know, it's like when you understand and know that you are like in constant communion with uh, the divine, it's just so 
different is different. Anything you eat, smell, taste, feel is constantly curious to you and that other thing is just really crazy. It's just like, you know, just like you, I don't know, I'm going to eat a sandwich and, you know, go and do this and, you know, blast on some ACDC or whatever. Like you don't just like walk around pushing people around. You actually understand the infinitely like crystalline nature of the world. So like a little bug sits on your shoulder or something and you still like, you know, just like, yeah, you know, you like, can't believe it there's a bug on my shoulder you know like so it's like a completely different it's a gold mine of ideas so like a lot of the channeling and stuff just comes through that and that's why everything is easy and effortless but that's like I don't know and then being this and like just being me like just being you like just being one yeah and yeah, that's probably the best place to be. It's just so hard to talk about it. Because it has um, no language. There's no spirituality that could support it. Like the minute I try to understand it myself or like process it through English language, it doesn't make any sense, right? So like speaking in tongues, right? Keep up making a wet name. You know, like that. You know, it's like uh, speaking in tongues, like channeling music and... Uh, Going to psychedelic realities, you don't have to take any drugs. You are psychedelic, like, you, you are, you know. And then that makes really crazy dreams happen for other people and uh, makes, like, a lot of friends sometimes. And then that's when you know that you have to walk out, you have to do something different, you can't keep things around like that. But I think it's just, like, about disappearing and eventually not having to be here. You know, and that's weird. So that's like another crisis of consciousness. Maybe I'll talk about this another time, about what it means to be like hyper open to creator. But that would probably only be like eventually, because that would be such a crazy topic to talk about today. Anyway, uh, that was like an hour. So I'll uh, see you next time. Thanks.